Hello, everybody. It is January 8th, 2011, and I've been watching a lot of videos for a long time, uh, atheists and creationists alike, trying to prove each other wrong. One trying to prove the non-existence of God, and the other trying to prove the existence of God. It's always the same arguments, and you can never prove that God exists, nor can you prove that God does not exist. So I really think it's kind of pointless to spend all that time and energy trying to prove that God does not exist. My stance on the issue is that I do not believe in God, or at least the biblical God. I do not know if there's a God or not, seeing as how I can't prove that there is or isn't. I grew up as a Christian, believing most of my life that there was a God, devoting myself to the church and to uh, doing God's work but I got smart. I began to actually read the Bible and study the Bible uh, and it was actually Bible studies that made me question whether I wanted to continue believing in um, the Bible, uh, believing in God. So I think rather than trying to prove or disprove God, I would rather try to question uh, whether the Bible is an accurate account of the God it's claiming. Now, nowadays Christians believe that God is, you know, good, uh, and that he's a loving, gentle, peaceful God. But we all know, we've all heard the arguments, and if you've read the Bible, you know that that's not the case. Uh, right now I'm going to read from Numbers Chapter 31, verses 13 through 47. And Moses and Eleazar, the priest, and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet without, with them without the camp. And Moses has worth wrath with the officers to, of the host, with the captains of over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? That's... Verse 15, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespasses against the Lord in the matter of Peor, and there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that hath known a man by lying with him. So kill all of the young males, children, babies, and kill all the women who have slept with a man. But all the women, children that have not known a man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. So Moses, with command of the Lord, is telling his men to keep all the young women, all the virgins, alive for themselves. So there you have it. Rape. Forced rape. Of young girls. And do you abide without the camp seven days? Whoever hath killed any person, and whoever hath Touch the slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. And purify all your remnant and all of his made of and all that is made of skins, and all work of goat's hair, and all things made of wood. And Eleazar the priest said unto men of war which went to battle, This is the ordinance of the law in which the Lord the Lord commands Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass and iron and tin and the lead. Everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Never, nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation, and all the abideth not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. Now let me ask you, why would God care if they had all the gold and silver? If God is so good and powerful and all-knowing, what is gold and silver? I mean, already just reading this, does this sound like something an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God would command to kill all the young men and women who have slept with men and to keep all the young virgins for yourself and to take all this gold and silver? If that's not purely motivated by the greed and evil of man, I don't know what is. And to say that's God, then you must deny the fact that you think God is a good and loving God, because that is not good and that is not loving. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and afterwards ye shall come to camp. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that, that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou 
and Eleazar the priest and the chief fathers in the congregation divide the prey into two parts between them that took the war upon them who went out to battle and between the congregations and levy a tribute unto the Lord of men Lord of the men of the war which went into battle one soul of five hundred both the persons and and the beeves I'm guessing it's cows or something I don't know I don't know and the asses and the sheep take take it of their half and give unto Eleazar the priest and and for an, for an heave offering of the Lord. And of the children of Israel half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons of the beeves, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner and beasts, and give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty, seeing the rest of the prey which was men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand, seventy thousand, and five thousand sheep, and three score and twelve thousand beeves, and three score and one thousand asses, and thirty of two thousand persons, and all of women that had not known men by lying with them, and of half which was a portion to them that went to war, and was number three hundred thousand, and seven thirty thousand, and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute to the sheep was six hundred and three score fifteen, and the beeves at thirty and six thousand, in which the Lord's tribute was three score and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, in which the Lord's tribute was three score and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand, in which the Lord's tribute was thirty two in persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, the half that pertained unto the congregation was three hundred thousand, thirty thousand, and seven thousand five hundred sheep, the thirty and six hundred thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred and thirteen thousand persons. Even though the children of Israel half, even of the children of Israel half, Moses took a portion of fifty, both the men and the beasts, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, and as the Lord commanded Moses, and the officers which were a thousand and a host of captains and thousands of captains of hundreds came near unto Moses, and they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of men and war in which were under the charge, and the lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an ob oblation for the Lord, that every man hath gotten in jewels of gold and chains and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tab tablets that make the atonement for our souls before the Lord. I think I went over a couple verses there. Um, but basically what you heard me reading they were talking about sacrifices, not only of asses, sheep, cows, but also people. So this great, all-knowing, omnipotent, loving God also required human sacrifice, blood sacrifices. So my question to you is, do you really think an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipotent God would need people to be sacrificed for him that he would really say it's okay to take young girls for themselves and to kill all the boys all the young boys and all the women who have had sex with men if you think that's good and loving if you think that's something that a wise powerful God that created the whole universe would do then you must you must subscribe to a very evil God so instead of me trying to prove that God does not exist I would say that if this God does exist and the God of the Bible the Christian God and this is also the God of the Jews and the Muslims as well since they all use the Old Testament um, if you really believe that that's real that he's real and, and and you believe that and you think that's good that's just sad and I would rather spend an eternity in hell burn forever than to be in heaven worshiping day in and day out for the rest for eternity I would rather go to hell than spend my time doing that someone who would con condone such evil acts
that's disgusting. And for people that believe that that's loving and good and justifiable, you're disgusting. You've got a problem. You should look into yourself and actually consider what you're, what you're believing in. And if you really think that those things are good, and if so, then why would you have a problem when a mom drowns her children and says God told her to do it? Or when a man kills someone else and says that God told them to do it? Because obviously, God's got a pretty good track record of telling people to do some pretty disgusting and evil things. So if you are a Christian and you do believe this stuff, then why not believe them? Why not believe these murderers that say God told them to do it? It's more likely that he did than that he didn't, if, if that's real. Because that's his personality. For thousands of years before Jesus came, that was his personality. And if you believe Jesus is God, then you must also believe that's Jesus' personality. He might have came to earth and decided to change his tone a little because he probably would have ended up dead a lot sooner than when he was 32, if he really did exist. But that's your God. That's who you believe in. That's who you think is just and righteous. A God that is okay with rape, murder, and sacrifice. So, you know, respond if you have something good to respond with, or but don't shoot any of the same arguments about God's existence or non-existence, or you know, if 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 you can tell me a way that this is just, if if you can explain in some way how this is justified, please do it. You know, have a go at it. See, I'd like to see what what kind of crazy. Uh, excuses you could come up with for how this is just or good and don't tell me that it's all about how you interpret it because that's that's just a bl biblical account of, of of history whether it's true or not I don't know but it, it's not a, a metaphor it's not a parable it's not oh you interpreted it wrong so if you can explain to me how that's just and good, then I'd be more than willing to listen to you and have a discussion. Thanks for watching the video, and maybe I'll make another one soon.